WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. That's us, Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP, 215-204-9449 is the number if you want to hop on board with us. Now joining me on the hotline is one of the most diligent people in the NFL, and that is NFL reporter for ESPN, Adam Schefter. Adam, Zach Gale, Paley Condon, how you doing? Hey, Zach, how you doing? Well, I'm doing great. It's great to have you on, as always. And I know you only got a few minutes with us, so let's get to this stuff quickly. You broke the news on the Darrell Revis trade. The big question for the Jets is, is a first and a third round pick enough for the New York Jets to say goodbye to their good cornerback? Well, it's more than any other team was offering. And I think more than I think a lot of people thought they would get in lieu of the circumstances. You had a guy coming off an ACL injury, headed into the last year of his contract. The Jets can't franchise him. They can't keep him. They can't re-sign him. So what are you going to do? They got back a one and a three for a player really they couldn't do a lot with. So to me, I, I thought they did very well, considering the circumstances. Now, if Revis is healthy and he's playing at the top level and there's no other factors involved, then, then I don't know about that. But the fact is, under the circumstances, I thought they did great. The only thing they could have done differently was could have made the trade two, three weeks earlier and probably gotten three picks from Tampa as opposed to two. But as it was, I thought... They did very well. I agree with you 110%, and I think if the Jets would have kept Darrell Revis one more year under that current contract, it would have been a horrible move. But what do you think it would have taken for the Jets to keep Darrell Revis? I would have to imagine they would have opened up their paybooks. Well, they weren't willing to do it, so it really is a move point. I mean, you, you see what it would take to keep him. Basically, he got a deal in Tampa that was for $16 million a year. That, that's what he was looking for. And, yes, the deal included no guaranteed money, but it's no uh, explicit guarantees. It's implicit in the guarantees that he'll make $16 million this season because Tampa's not going to cut him before the year when they gave up the picks it did. There's no way Rex Ryan could be happy about this move, and uh, you know that he has a lot of kind words to say about Darrell Revis. He called him the best defensive player in football, but it looks like to me that Rex Ryan's just going to be a lame duck head coach this year, and if he doesn't make the playoffs, and I know anything could happen in the NFL, but three years in a row I can't see him surviving in New York. Well, I think everybody agrees that Rex Ryan's going to have to win this year, and it's going to be a difficult situation. And basically, uh, if he doesn't win, it's going to be tough for him to keep his job. So if Darrell Revis can stay healthy, this Buccaneer secondary looks completely different. How good can they be? Well, on paper, it, it looks very good, Zach. I mean, you got Darrell Revis and Eric Wright playing cornerback and Deshaun Golson and uh, Mark Barron playing safety. I mean, on paper, that, that's, a, that's a great secondary. Now they've got to go out and do it, and we'll see and get a pass rush. Uh, but we'll see. The Jets pick up two first-round picks now in the draft. Where could you see the Jets possibly targeting them? Because the success of this trade will be based off of what the Jets draft. Well, of course. And I think it's a situation where you're looking at they have so many needs. I mean, there's not a position that they don't have a need at, basically. I mean, can you name one position where the Jets wouldn't be happy upgrading at? There's not one. They need pass rushers. They need playmakers. They need offensive linemen. They need wide receivers. They, they could use running backs. They could use... Uh, cornerback, they can use everything, everything. So it, it really is a question, who's the best player at that spot? Who represents the best value? And I think it's a situation where you just let the board fall into place and you take the guy that's there that you think is going to make a difference. Revis was on WFAN yesterday, and he said that the Jets had minimal contact with him throughout this whole process. Is that what you're hearing as well, that they weren't really showing him that much? They, were, they weren't really keeping him in the loop? It, it's very obvious what they were trying to do. They were, they, they, they were going to trade him. I mean, that's the deal. They, they were not going to re-sign him. And if you're not going to re-sign him and you're intent upon trading him, why would you even have a whole lot of contact with him? It really doesn't mean a whole lot. Adam Schefter of ESPN joins us. A few more questions as I know you're pressed for time today. But let's get to the team that we cover here in Philadelphia, and that's the Eagles. I never got your take on Chip Kelly. What do you think he brings to the city of brotherly love? Well, it is, is great imagination and creativity on the offensive side of football. Now, we'll see over time, should he stay with the job? I mean, he, he's been a difficult, unpredictable mind to read. Uh, I think that clearly he's been thinking about going to the NFL for a while now. He's finally made the decision to go do that. I think the Eagles roster is a good roster. I think there's talent there. I I think he could win there, and this obviously will be a big draft, as any draft is for any team. They've got to find some good playmakers here. They they, they need some linemen on both sides of the ball. Uh, That number four pick will be interesting. They've they've made a couple of calls to see if there's any interest in moving back. Uh, Again, you won't know about something like that until the draft begins to happen and players start to slide but I I, I think he comes in there and I think it makes a difference and I, I think he's going to be an effective head coach I believe they're going to go offensive line or defensive line in this draft because that's their biggest area of need the offensive lineman it's a good line but they struggled to stay healthy over the years and the Eagles need a better pass rush give me some names that you're hearing for the Eagles at number four 
Well, I think you look at uh, pass rushers like Ziggy Ansah. Uh, I think you look at guys like Starlo Tulele. Uh, I think you look at uh, Eric Fisher, if he's there in a the perfect world, uh, would be a great pick, but I don't think he's going to be there at four, uh, and that leaves Philly in a difficult situation. Lane Johnson maybe a four. That, that would be an interesting little selection there. Uh, I'll tell you what I don't think it is. I, I don't think it'll be Geno Smith. I don't think it'll be D. Milliner. Uh, I don't think it'll be Deion Jordan. I agree with you. I don't think they're going out there and taking Geno Smith. I think that would be a reach at number four. But what do you think Geno Smith could bring to an NFL team? Are you a fan of his game? I, I haven't studied enough of him. Listen, you know, you're talking to teams, and one of the great questions about Geno Smith right now is where is he going to go? Everybody's trying to figure out a spot where he would land. And I don't know that anybody's got an answer to that right now. Nobody. Uh, there might be a team line out there saying, we know we're going to draft Geno, but uh, I, I think the only team in the top ten that may opt for Geno Smith is Cleveland. And I'm not telling you that it will, but I'm just telling you he's in consideration there. And so if he doesn't go there, where does he go? And I think once you get beyond the top ten, we're in essentially a complete unpredictable no-man's land where it could happen at any point where a team could just trade up that you're not expecting. Uh, we've seen teams trade up for Tim Tebow, for Brandon Whedon in the 20s. Uh, it won't surprise me if we see another trade up tomorrow or Thursday night for a quarterback to land for a certain team. Zach Elp here, Philly's number one college radio station, talking to Adam Schefter. Adam, two more questions right before we let you go. Andy Reid, he's out of Philadelphia. He's now in Kansas City. Alex Smith will be his quarterback, and he's making some moves already. How far away do you think the Chiefs are from winning again? Uh, not far away. I think that they, they've got talent, and, and they went out and they secured the most important position on the team at the quarterback. They went out and traded a lot for Alex Smith, maybe more than some people thought that Another team would give up, but the fact is, if you don't have that quarterback position secured, you you don't have a chance to win. So Kansas City did what it had to to lock up Alex Smith, got the guy that it wanted. Uh, obviously not as good as Peyton Manning, but he's good enough to get them to the playoffs. He was good enough to get the 49ers to an NFC Championship game. And I, I think there's talent in Kansas City, and I think they can win. Final one here with you. Let's get to my team. That's the New England Patriots. Uh, they lost a lot at the receiver position this year. They bring in Danny Amendola. They lose Wes Welker and Brandon Lloyd. Is the uh, position of wide receiver, can you see the Patriots possibly going that route in the first round? They've never done it under Bill Belichick, and that's not to say that they won't do it here, depending on who's there at that time. But they've never gone wide receiver in the first round. And I think when you look at this draft, the strength of the draft is in rounds two and three. I don't think there's any doubt that New England will go for a wide receiver with one of its top picks. I just would be a little surprised if they went for a wide receiver with their top pick. Well, Adam, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. I know you're busy. We appreciate a few minutes. Thank you, Zach. Have a good one. Adam Schefter right there of ESPN. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back right after these short messages. 